In this session, you'll learn how to add a new family account along with a couple of children. To begin, go to the Family Data and Accounting portion of ProCare. You'll notice there aren't any families entered yet, so you'll begin by clicking the plus sign to add a new account. The first thing you'll enter is an account key. This is a way of alphabetizing or looking up the family and is usually the first part of their last name. In this case, our family's last name is Harris. It's short enough that we can fit the whole thing in there. Occasionally, you may want to also put like a first initial of whoever the primary account holder is. So we might do Harris J uh, since the mom's name is Joanna. Then we will add to that account the payers. These are the people responsible for making sure the bill gets paid. And typically that will be one or both parents. We'll click on the little down arrow here next to the plus sign and we'll choose to add a brand new person, a person not yet in ProCare. So we're going to type in Harris and we'll tab over to the first name. In this case, the mom's name is Joanna. And it really isn't necessary to have this other information for the parent in most cases. We probably will want an email address. Uh, we don't necessarily need date of birth or, or some of those other things. So we'll just do an email there. And then you can add additional information here as needed. So for example, we may want to add an address. And we've got the city, state, and zip, which defaults to the city, state, and zip that our center is located in. You can certainly type over that if it's different for this family. And then we can indicate whether that is a mailing address or a physical address or both. And when you click Update, you'll notice the address appears in the background. So you could stay on the screen and add an additional address for a P.O. box or something else if needed. We'll go ahead and exit. And then we will move over and add a phone number for Joanna. And we will save that. And we click Update. You'll notice that also appears in the background, but we can continue adding additional phone numbers from the screen we're on. We'll put in her cell number. And we might want to make a comment on there like call first. Maybe that's the best way to reach her. Okay. And in this case, we may want to reverse these two and put the cell number first on the list so we can choose that and use the up arrow to reposition them. Another thing we may want to do here if there's a spouse or other people in the family who have the same address or say same home phone number, we can copy those for use later. So we'll click on that and choose copy. We'll click on the home phone and choose copy and then we can use those later. If you want to, you can add an image a photo of this person. You can find out how to do so by going to the question mark in the upper right, which will tell you more about this screen and how to do things such as add a photo. For now, we're just going to click continue. And we've got Joanna Harris added as the first or what we call the primary payer on this account. If we wanted to add a spouse, we could click the little drop down arrow and choose add a, and a new person, someone not yet in ProCare. And let's say her spouse is John Harris. And we'll leave the date of birth and then I would put in an email for him. And then we can simply paste in the home address and paste in the home phone. And then we can add an additional phone number and so on for this person as needed. We'll go ahead and click continue. And what you'll find here is that we get a screen called person reconcile. The reason this screen comes up is it's trying to prevent us from accidentally entering the same person twice. And you'll see that we have a possible duplicate of an existing person. We have an existing person, Joanna Harris. And then we have the new person we just entered down here, John Harris. Since John really is a brand new person, we're gonna click once on his name and click save. And that gives us both John and Joanna as people on this account. So now we can click save and exit. And we've got the payer set up. Now, before we exit, if this was a, were a subsidized family, you could go to the agency screen here. And if you've set up your agencies, you can choose that agency. This will allow us to charge a portion of the tuition 
to that agency and keep the balance separate from the family. Then we'll go ahead and exit. And now you'll see we've got our first account set up uh, with both the pairs, Joanna and John. Next, we'll want to add some children to this account. To do so, you'll click the little down arrow next to the plus sign here for adding a child. And again, we'll say add a new person. And we'll say this is Johnny. And we do need, uh, for the child, of course, we'll need to have a date of birth. And I'm using the space bar to move between the month the days and the year, or you can click the down arrow there and use a calendar. And the rest of this information we could leave blank. Of course, we could paste in the address and paste in the home phone number if we want to. And continue. And again, we get the screen now because this person's name is so close to, and they have the same address and phone number, that it's possible that we've made a mistake and are entering the same person over again. So let's just double check. At the top, it shows two possible existing people, Joanna and John. If those really were the person we were entering, we'd pick them and click Select. That would prevent us from accidentally re-entering the same person. But the truth is, the new person just entered at the bottom, Johnny Harris, is their son. He's a different person, so we're going to save him separately. And then he appears on the screen. So now that we have Johnny's basic information entered, you'll see that his information is in italic text. The italic text indicates that he is currently unenrolled. And there are several main screens that we're going to want to go to for Johnny. Uh, right now, the two most important are the enrollment screen, which we are going to go to right here, enrollment status. And we are going to put in uh, his date of enrollment. If you don't know the actual date of enrollment, he's been there for a while, you could do something like December 31st of last year, just something to show that he's currently enrolled. So we're going to say that uh, he enrolled, maybe he enrolled uh, a couple months ago, and he is currently enrolled. You can actually keep an ongoing history here, though, and even record things like when they first visited the center, maybe took a tour. You can create your own enrollment statuses and things. For now, just having him enrolled is enough. So we'll click Exit. He's now shown as enrolled, and he's no longer in italics because now he's currently enrolled. So it's a visual indicator to us. The second button that's important to go to, so we've been to the enrollment screen. The second button that's important to go to is the information and relationships screen. This is where we can assign a classroom as well as people related to the child. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll get a prompt asking us if we want to import the parents as related people. Yes, usually the payers are the parents, and so we would typically want to say yes to that. It brings them both in. And we simply indicate that Joanna is the mom, John is the dad, child lives with both of them, they're both emergency contacts, and they're both pickup people. The pickup column is important for anybody who will be checking children in and out on a computer check-in station. That column will need to be marked in order for them to be able to do that. Now we can add additional people as well. So we could come down here to the Add button, and let's say they have a friend or a neighbor or another relative who's also an authorized pickup person. So if it was somebody already in Procare, we could look them up by saying add existing person. Right now it's a brand new person not yet in the system. So we're going to say add new person. And we'll put in their information. And we really don't necessarily need other information. We probably would want a phone number for this person whatever information we have been provided. And then we can say continue. And now we have her added on this list as a related person. We can just indicate how, maybe she's a neighbor, emergency contact, and a pickup. The other thing on this screen is this is also the place where we assign a classroom to the child. So if we know what that classroom is, and we can go ahead and let's just say he's in one of our preschool rooms. So I'm going to assign him to the Blue Whales room. And we're going to go ahead and save and exit. So now we've got Johnny Harris, the son, set up with basic information. The next thing we want to do is add a second child, a sibling, to this account. This will help us show things in future segments 
about how to set up billing and so on, you can see how it works on a two-child family. So we'll go to the little drop-down arrow to add a new child, and we'll say new person because this is someone, again, not yet in ProCare. So we'll say Harris, and this is Robin. And we could put in a date of birth for her. And then we could paste in the address, paste in the home phone if we want to, and continue. You'll see she's in italics again. Why? Because she's currently not enrolled. So you can get to the enrollment screen this way, but another way to get there is to double click down here where it says unknown for her enrollment. And you can establish that right here. Now maybe she's, she's a little older, so maybe she has been at the center longer. So we could just type in a date if we wanted to. And we'll say that she's enrolled. And then she's no longer in italic text. Uh, the last thing is uh, we can assign the related people in the classroom to her. Again, we can go to that relationship screen. Or we can double click where it says unknown next to the classroom. It'll ask if we want to import the pairs as relationships. In this case, it's OK to say no, because we're going to actually import all of the related people from the sibling. So we're going to go ahead and say no. It wouldn't have hurt if we said yes. We're going to say no. So to add people down here, we're going to pick the little drop down arrow. And because this child has a sibling, you have the option to say import from, and we'll import from her brother, Johnny. And it brings all the people over. We will need to establish the relationship since it's not necessarily the same for the other child. And then we'll say family friend. That keeps the emergency and the pickups. And then we could assign her to a classroom. She may be in the after school program. Click Save. One other thing I wanted to point out is that you can use the blue arrows here to move on this screen between siblings. You'll see that moves to Johnny Harris. That moves back to Robin, the sister. And once we have more families entered, you could use the blue down and blue up arrows to move up and down between accounts on the screen. So we'll go ahead and exit. Now you can see I've entered all my families and I have a long list of accounts to choose from on the left hand side. If I want to go back and make a change to a person on this account, I can simply double click on their name anywhere I see it. So for example, let me double click on the mom's name, Joanna, and it will open up her person information screen and I can make changes here. So one thing I may want to change or adjust is that for the cell phone, I will want to select a carrier if I want to be able to send text messages to this person. So I would go to the text message option down here, and then I will get to pick the phone number to be the text number. It's already defaulting to the cell phone, and I simply choose the carrier like AT&T. So that's something I'd want to ask on my admissions forms would be who their cell phone provider is. And we'll go ahead and update that, and that's easy to do for each person in the account. So now that I've got this large list of families, I can look up any particular family by simply clicking on their name on the left-hand side or typing in the first few letters of their name, like AR for the Arnold family, and they show up. To clear my filtering and get back to showing all my families, I can simply click on the little default icon here and I get my full list of families back. To get back to the Harris family that I just entered, type the first couple of letters, HA. I see all the accounts that begin with HA, and I can simply click on their name. And that's all there is to entering your first family account.